Good evening. Um, I'm Joe White, and uh, you've found your way to A Life in the Arts, which is a presentation of the Masterwork Music and Art Foundation. And so tonight we are honored to have Janika Svetlivas. Uh, did I get that right? Svetvilas. Almost got it right. Um, I'll get better by the end of the evening. <laughs> um, and uh, who is going to show show us some of and discuss uh, some of the wonderful work she's doing. And um, so, but before we get to that, I will uh, turn it over briefly uh, to the Masterwork Foundation's Executive Director, Todd Whitley, who will do his 30-second spot. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> yes. And for those of you that don't know, the Masterwork Music and Art Foundation was founded over 60 years ago to support excellence in the arts. And today um, we do so in a number of ways. We offer a premier award that's a $10,000 gift to an artist or an arts organization. We offer community arts grants and we offer competitive awards. We also have free classes and this series here, A Life in the Arts. So you can check us out on masterworkarts.org. But tonight, we're very excited to have a past Community Arts Awardee with us and to hear more about her story. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. And so now I get to demote Todd. And wait a minute, where are we going? Yes. And that's what we wanted. Okay. So, um, Tanika, I actually, the, the place that I really always like to start is, okay, what was the event or the thing or the person you met or the experience in life that let you know that this was what you wanted to do? Well, first, I'd like to thank Masterwork Foundation for the support. And um, for me, um, I always remember sketching um, as a young child. And mm -hmm. so art was always a part of my life. Um, I really enjoyed um, drawing people, drawing friends and people around me and um, and am animals. Um, and I don't think there was any one event Um I just always felt that I was gravitating towards creating as a way to communicate because I was also a very shy child growing up. Mm. And so it was a way for me to have my voice heard and a way to express myself. Um, and I think it wasn't until I was in college, I attended Skidmore College, and I ended up um, pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Studio Art. And at first I was resisting majoring in art because I thought, okay, I should really major some, something more practical. <laughs> um, and um, that was sort of my parents' voice in my head too. It's like, just make sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something to fall <laughs> back on. Yes. So, but I, I did end up um, majoring in art and um, I was also very active politically on campus. And I think for me, what was um, the turning point was the shift from just aesthetics and making beautiful paintings. Um, I, I had sort of a surrealist bent to my paintings and creating these worlds. And I felt like I was illustrating my ideas. And I think through the activism on campus um, with students of color, for instance, um, I, I was active with um, Students Organized Against Racism and also with um, an Asian American Students Organization. And I wanted my art to say something. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was very motivated and it has impacted the rest of my time in the arts is um, having more of a social practice, having work that um, focuses on the content of the issues I, I, that are dear to my heart and that um, responds or reflects my lived experience. Mm. The, well, okay, first of all, we are very, very delighted that um, we were able to assist you and in, in creating this. And the wonderful thing is that you, it'll be displayed at the at Princeton University at the Ida B. Wells 
Data Lab. This is starting in September 2023, and um, which is amazing and impressive and wonderful. And um, the um, but the thing in particular is so this particular work. What was the what was the seed of it? What was the the thing that that started this in becoming real? So the project that the Masterwork Foundation supported is called Anonymous Was the Data. So it's yes. sort of a reflection of Anonymous Was the Woman. Um, so instead, it's Anonymous Was the Data. And I originally proposed this project for an artist in residency um, uh, called the Crypt Tech Incubator, which is uh, uh, hosted by uh, the Leonardo nonprofit organization in California and Oakland, and they support work that's at the intersection of science, art, and technology. And I got as far as the interview process. And then at the last moment, <laughs> okay. my, my uh, project was declined. Oh, well. But I still had faith in the, in the project and still wanted to do it. And I thought um, it would be um, a way to also uplift my community um, that, is, that I identify with, which is Asian American and neurodiverse. And um, I still talked about it. Um, I um, mentioned it to others. And then um, more recently um, in May, 2022, I gave an artist talk as part of a two person show that was in Ypsilanti, uh, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And um, on a whim, I DM'd, I direct messaged um, through Instagram, Dr. Ruha Benjamin, who's the founder of the Ida B. Wells Just Data Lab, mm -hmm. and a professor in the African American Studies Department at Princeton University. And I actually wasn't thinking she would actually attend, but I thought, why not? <laughs> okay, um, right. Because, because her work intersects with um, technology and and health and data justice. And so she was in line and alignment with the focus of my proposed project. And lo and behold, she attended. And, wow. um, and immediately after my artist talk, she said, um, cause I had mentioned also when I DM'd her about my project and I was the data, but just like one line. And then immediately after the artist talk, she said, um, do you have time this weekend? Um, I and you know send me the written proposal and so I already had the proposal I just tweaked it um, I based on some of the issues that were brought up when I interviewed for the other residency I knew what I needed to tweak and then I sent her the proposal and we had a, just a talk on Saturday right after the artist talk and she said well she told me about the lab um, which I actually wasn't that familiar with. And then she said, well, do you know that we have an artist in residency program? And that's mm. when she invited <laughs> me to be an artist in residence at Princeton with the Ida B. Wells Just Data Lab. And so um, it was wonderful to also come in with the support from the Asterisk Foundation um, as the initial um, impetus of getting support for, for the project. Um, and uh, for the residency, um, for the lab to host my project. And so to back up, um, the Anonymous Was the Data project um, focuses on the AAPI community, the Asian American and Pacific Islander community at, at the intersection of mental health and healthcare um, access. So the project involves um, a, a survey, which we, um, put together with consultation with um, an, an informal advisory committee that I have, um, people that um, are um, once a, a family therapist and then um, one works for disability, um, community-based organization, and another one works in disability studies. And then Dr. Ruha Benjamin is the other advisory committee member. Um, so they reviewed the questions and gave me feedback. And then I also have um, research associates who are students at Princeton, who also gave feedback and helped me to work on it. Um, and then I also consulted with someone who um, is blind and um, assessed the, the survey for accessibility. So mm. once we 
went through that process, then it was live um, and we sent it out to our various networks and we're still receiving feedback now, um, collecting data through the survey. And the survey um, questions people's lived experience, um, gathering data about um, stigma they experience, access, what's had, had inhibited access, such as lack of health insurance or lack of access to um, uh, psychiatric care that um, at, uh, acknowledges their intersexual identity, um, you know, do they have transportation? Do they have childcare? So those kinds of questions. Um, and then all that data that we're collecting is digitized into a 3D file and mapped to create a 3D printed sculpture. Mm. And the format is a prescription bottle. Mm -hmm. And each of the data set is a distortion of that bottle. Um, and once we have printed, 3D printed the sculptures, they will be installed into installation and that will be the exhibit. So the format is ever changing because we're still trying to figure out and mm -hmm. um, create the prototypes. Um, but, um, and, and it will evolve based on um, also um, having a few of the participants who are volunteering to be interviewed. So we'll have some that will also reflect a more detailed lived experience. And, yeah, the, um, um, yeah, the thing that for me, besides the, um, you know, the aesthetic uh, appeal and what you're creating the other thing is you're touching into um mental health is the thing that we all would wish could be swept under the rug you know it's nobody wants to deal with it and you know the trouble is of course we're all on a continuum uh, and i mean those of us who think they're healthy that's just means we're on the the one end of the spectrum not we we all have those same things and so it's um i'm you know i think this is going to be a wonderful thing and you've given us some photographs of um what this or at least is what this is shaping up to look like and let me share those and uh you'll tell us what we're doing here so hold on and here and oh wait a minute before i do that let me actually start the slideshow so the things there we go and here and there and i'm hoping everybody can see that so yeah uh all That's right me in my studio and i should preface this uh, presentation with a content warning because i am talking about my own mental health and hospitalizations and also suicide so those are all sensitive topics so please mm. uh, take care of yourself as as you you need to. Um, so this is um, my studio, which is located in a building called the Art Station, which is located in Heightstown. It houses 16 studios and mine is one of them. Um, and uh, it's it's a narrow space. It, I, I've actually, believe it or not, have created 20 foot drawings of the space. I just rotate the paper. <laughs> okay. So yes. I included this um, slide because I think you know, people are always curious about what an artist studio looks like, um, as messy it as it is, um, but also to show the scale of the work. Mm -hmm. So um, behind me um, are three drawings that are part of a series um, that I created during the pandemic called What, I've, what I Have Learned, filled in the blank. Mm -hmm. um, so it's also about the process of learning, which is not only through teachers through school, but also your classmates and the socialization process, but also what you have to unlearn. So mm. sometimes what you learn is not really um, right, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so behind me, um, oh, and I, I sourced this paper during the pandemic when um, we were under lockdown from um, a school teacher who's getting rid of the stack of paper. And it's hard to see from the slide, um, but it's all line paper, like the kind you use to learn handwriting. Ah. And that, that what that's what... Um, was the impetus for me to focus on this idea of the learning process and was okay. the um, instigator for some of my drawing ideas. So these drawings behind me are about um, my experience um, with psychiatry. 
Mm. and hospitalization. So the first drawing says, I crossed out all the words I did not agree with in the hospital. Or I'm sorry, I did, I, I did not agree with on the hospital admission form. The psychiatrist said, you can't sign it that way and get <laughs> one. And the middle drawing says, I raised my eyes towards the sky and the raindrops touched my skin. I left the, I felt, sorry, I felt the elation and freedom on the other side of the exit. So mm. it, it's to reflect you know, when you're hospitalized for um, a psychiatric condition, you're under lockdown. Yes. And, um, and you, you can't get out, literally. Um, and so I wanted to express the jubilation of, of being outdoors and what that's like to no longer mm. be um, incarcerated, basically. Um, yeah. The next um, drawing says the psychiatrist gave me a multiple choice test. And after I turned it, he said, you cheated the test. Your answers can't be true. <laughs> So, the um uh, uh, oh yeah okay sure <laughs> and then it, towards the I, you can see an opaque projector and i use that to capture the aerial font so i'm actually tracing hmm. the font um and this is um and then you know it's all made with charcoal um and i mm -hmm. use charcoal because it's a transformative material um, and also activated charcoal is used after a stomach is pumped from drug overdose. So right. uh, I had a suicide attempt where I overdosed on sleeping pills. And so, um, I remember, um, spewing out all this charcoal. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I use the charcoal as a reflection of that lived experience. And also I like that it's an imperfect medium. Like there's a lot of smears and smudges also because I'm left-handed. So I, it smears across the page and I don't try to erase those marks. I, mm. I like to reveal the marks as part of the process. And also um, to recognize that it's impossible to mimic the print. You know, I can't perfect it. Um, and also um, the, the imperfections and the smudges are a part of the resistance to conformity. You know, I'm not trying to um, stay within the lines, for instance. Um, you can go to the next image. Yes. Hold on. Uh, Got to be on that. Oops. Oh, here we go. There we are. No, well, the, the um, no. I was going to say that one of the things about your use of charcoal it reminds me we had an artist who we spoke with, uh, I guess a couple of months back, uh, who uses smoke, oh, to paint with, and um, again, uh, it has that wonderful, you know, it's like that feeling of something becoming, mm -hmm. rather than something you know that's fixed and finished. Yes, exactly. and. Uh, and I love these. These are just wonderful. So this image is to show scale. So there's someone peering at my sculptures on a shelf, and they're all made with prescription bottles. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I like to say I animate the inanimate. So mm -hmm. um, they, they become these sort of anthropomorphized um, uh, figures. Uh, um, uh, but they're made with prescription bottles, and they're melted, and then I adorn them. Um, I always say I adorn them with bling. <laughs> um, and uh, the idea for adorning them with bling came from um, this awareness of kintsugi, which is the Japanese ceramic practice of mm -hmm. preparing the ceramics with lacquer mixed with uh, gold or silver or platinum. Yeah. And it's what it means is it rather than saying, oh, this is broken and needs to be tossed away, it embraces the history of the object. Mm. Um, it sees it still as whole, you know, it's, it's the breakage is part of its history. And so I like to see that in relationship to disability. So you can go to the next slide and then I can show some of the, yeah, um, there's one. Video. So if you play the video, it'll show, um, let me see if, okay, let, hopefully this won't. So this is, um, mm. uh, one of the sculptures um, with a spoon. Um, and uh, I also added some resin teeth and the spoon is jetting out. So in the disability community, we talk about the amount of spoons we have, which is a reflection of how much energy we have. Um, and I use doll arms here and then um, uh, the anthurium flower. Um, mm. I, was, I want to use it for the province of stigma. So I, I use flowers sometimes because stigma is also a part of the anatomy of the flower that allows other flowers to 
pollinate and uh, more flowers to bloom. So it doesn't have to be just a negative term. Because I was right. saying, no, I was, well, was going to say it's a different, a, a whole mirror image of the word stigma. Yes. And um, this one's called Icarus. And it mm. has um, the feathers and um, it, it's, it's that um, uh, story of Icarus uh, flying too close. Right. On, you know, and the and the bottle is melted. Yes, and it has chains dripping from it. This is called warning signs. It has the bell at the end. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, I try to play with my titles. So it sort of reflects a little bit of the condition, but also, um, you know, a little amusing <laughs> and fun. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and they are. They're delightful, and and you can this... fast forward that a little bit. Uh... If Watch if I can do that without. Uh, uh, That's called on. Ripley. Um, that also has a bell and it has a Hello Kitty um, butterfly wings. <laughs> right. And a tail. And a and tail, I, yes. I use brass beads, so it's it's galvanized wire that loops around that allows me to string the beads. Mm. Yeah. Let me see if I can move forward without creating. You can move forward a little bit because uh, I don't want to take up too much time with this, but this is okay. called back well you know what we could do is move on yeah, yeah, let's look at one or one or two more and then move on to the next slide okay. let's see here oh yes so these are melted together so they're conjoined this is called this is untitled unseen as um safety pins in it mm. and i like using reflective beads because the idea of self-reflection right and also it brings the room into the piece yes yeah Okay. So I often use like mirrored plexiglass and things of that nature. I'm going to, oh, well, no, this is these. I'm trying to, uh, let's see if we can move. There we go. <clears throat> so I want to share this just to show that I have a practice also of audience participating in the work. Right. And this was called Write a Prescription of Support. And so I invited people to take a prescription bottle that was that I labeled and, um, write um there would be i give them a slip of paper and they could write a prescription of support mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times they would reflect on what kind of support they would want and the idea is to go through that process of um, thinking what does support feel like when have they felt like they received the kind of support they wanted because sometimes you get support that's not the kind of support you want frequently <laughs> They wrote it, they, they just rolled up the paper and put it in the prescription bottle for someone else to take. And then they could take one that someone else wrote. So it was an even exchange. Um, so it's like mutual aid. Um, and um, I unraveled um, some of the um, prescriptions that people wrote at random. One right. says give up, one says pets, like the idea of pets giving you comfort. Mm, yeah. Um, so things like that. Um, and um, people really enjoyed that process. And then on the prescription bottle was a QR code. And when you played the QR code, it was an interview between one person that was seeking support and another person that was receiving. But as, mm -hmm. they, as they interview, you realize that the lines blur between who is the receiver and who's, right. who's giving the support. So you can go to the next slide. Yes. So ah. this, um, this is in a <laughs> gallery in Ipsy Atlante. And so these mirrored silver balloons um, were suspended from the ceiling. And then I invited people to write a self-affirmation. So they would see themselves in the balloon and then they would write a self-affirmation, um, you know, affirming their own self. Um, and when they wrote it, it was also left for other people to read. So that's another uh, project I did that um, invited audience participation. You can go to the next slide. I was going to say the little guy, I don't think wrote anything. <laughs> But anyway, oh, mm -hmm. so this is um, a charcoal drawing. Um, and this one is five feet by six and a half feet. And um, a lot of my um, drawings, I use um, collage. And in mm. particular, I've been using medication guides. Um, and ah, uh, I okay. like the irony that yes. the Medication guides are, you know, they say, please read the entire guide before taking medication, but they're in like four point font. So it's not an accessible. And I was going to say, has anyone ever actually yeah. done that? <laughs> so um, the, uh, the medication guides, what I did is I 
some of them are the small font and some I blew up right. um, enlarged uh, on a photocopy machine. Um, and then um, it's a process of layering. So then I drew with charcoal, a Thai floral pattern. My background is, is my heritage is Thai, um, Thai American. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then um, I layered with charcoal um, on top of the pattern, um, mm -hmm. uh, different types of um, images and text. So one is the, the number you see is the diagnosis number for bipolar disorder, which is found in the DSM. So the DSM is the Diagnostic Statistical, right. and statistical Manual uh, for Mental um, Disorders. And, um, you know, it's a controversial um, manual. Um, it, it started in 1952 by the American Psychiatric Association. And um, it's controversial because a lot of times um, the focus is pathologizing human behavior. Yes. Um, so, um, but it, so it's a two edged sword. So, um, at the same time, the diagnosis allows access to care because um, without right. the diagnostic number, you wouldn't get access to care through health insurance, for instance. Exactly. No, you um, have to have a number. Yes. Um, and then I use um, comic action words. Um, yes. You say kapow and wham. So I like the idea of the sense of violence, but, you know, it's it's in these comic words. Mm. And um Diagonally, you can see the medical staff with a certain wrap wrapped around it. Um, and then there's the word not, and then it's all good. Mm. You know, a certain amount of irony. And then there's certain um, uh, side effects um, that are highlighted for, that are from the medication guides. And then um, I use um, rice paste. My mom would send letters to... Um, my grandmother using rice paste and that creates the water content in rice paste creates this ripple effect. Yes. Uh, so there's some, so the process in that just the smears in the charcoal, but also the process of um, transforming the paper with the rice, paper, yeah. rice paste. I mean, it's not pristine paper anymore. It's, it, it's been used. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Undergoing the process. And you can go to the next slide. Okay. Ah, Okay. And so this one um, is also um, collage, but instead, um, uh, this is also four feet by four feet. Um, the photocopies are actually of a psychiatric reading scale that mm -hmm. psychiatrists use. Um, and uh, I, I glued it at different sides and upside down. So the idea is that it's very fragmented and you can't necessarily understand the rating scale. Um, so it's sort of reflective of, you know, you, you can't um, encompass a whole lived mental health experience through some kind of rating scale. Um, so it's all fractured and- um, Well, and the exit isn't clear. Yes. Yeah, so the exit, so there's- it's, There's four I, of them, but they're not- Yeah, they're all four- um, uh, directions and also they're backwards and upside down um yeah. and, and then, the, it oh, almost it's... has this three-dimensional it almost feels like there's a glass platter mm -hmm. up in front of the other thing with the because the push down and turn yeah. and the open and close look you know they're very crisp yes and whereas the other things you know have their uh are more ephemeral and more yeah. yeah, wonderful action. Okay, next slide. Yeah. Okay. And so this drawing um, again has enlarged photocopies. It's it's um, four feet by five feet, and it's using the medication guide of uh, Abilify, which is an antipsychotic, which I take. Um, and I uh, again blowing up the font size. Um, and the text fragments that I use are the ingredients and the side effects. And so I pieced it together like a sort of like a mismatched quilt. Mm. Um, and then I used, I forgot to mention the orange pastel that I use with the charcoal. So the orange pastel came about with this idea of reflecting the color of the prescription bottles. Mm. And so the graphic is like from these caution danger signs, like that kind yeah. of um, yeah. zigzag. Um, and then the center charcoal drawing is of an Arawan, which is the Thai name 
of the mythological elephant, Arivata, and it's also the, um, it's a white elephant, which is the meaning of my last name. And um, I, and it's also the brand of rice that I use. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a, Erwan is a rice. This is a, actually a trademark of a rice company. Mm -hmm. I wanted to reflect on this idea of consuming rice and consuming medication. And also it has been used as a euphemism consumer has for those who have a mental health condition or difference. Mm. Uh, is a term that emerged in the 80s and it referred to people with mental health differences as consumers referring to the use of health services but i always thought that was funny because we're all consumers like yes <laughs> it just felt felt very odd to me right. um go to the next drawing ah so this is uh four feet by four and a half feet and it's top of uh on top of photocopies of the dsm description of bipolar disorder and um, I think I, I forgot to mention that that is my condition as I have bipolar um, and I was hospitalized for manic episodes. Um, and I use the title page, um, which has a portrait of Benjamin Rush. And he he's considered the father of American psychiatry. And then 1844, which they have on the title page is the founding of the American Psychiatric Association. And again, I use the zigzag with, um, uh, the orange pastel and in the center are human lungs drawn with charcoal and i wanted to emphasize the breath mm. and and the, the and the orange and the orange really it, it evokes uh i don't know for me it evokes you know traffic safety uh posters and things also it's like a, it is a warning yes exactly um and then the next slide um, this is four feet by six feet, um, mm -hmm. which you also saw in my studio, and it's layered with pastel and charcoal. And again, it's medication guides and, and then also photocopies of the DSM. Mm. And um, so I'm using some of the motifs that I used before, like the exit sign. Um, and then also um, uh, I do have drawings of the bipolar neuron, but I didn't share those, but it is here in this drawing on the left, right. it resting on the spoon. So the bipolar neuron, um, it's the neuron for um, our senses. And um, I put a jaw um, where the soma, where the nucleus would be. So I right. tried to animate it as like a figure. Um, you know, this micro <laughs> um, neuron is now enlarged. Um, and again, I use the spoon, uh, which I mentioned before is, is well, and, and, and that's, you know, and the, there's creatures here. Yes. Uh, there's who... a Naga, which is a Thai uh, creature, um, mythological creature in the lower left corner, and then also a raven yes. and then the gears. And you see Benjamin Rush within the gears. So yes. It's, it's about that medical industrial complex and being part of a system. And so then there's a figure yes. um, that uh, has almost like a zipper, open zipper, sort of like exposed um, that's precariously there by the gears. And then the upper right corner is um, part of a drawing that my niece sent to me when I was in the hospital. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I can go to the next drawing. Mm. So then um, this drawing, um, I don't really have a title for it. It's five feet by six feet. Um, and it's in charcoal and pastel and a large photocopies of a psych psychiatric rating scale. And it, this one is mounted on illustration boards. So I've been experimenting with other ways to work because um, someone mentioned to me how challenging it has been to hang like my 20 foot drawings. Right. <laughs> I pull them up and ship them, but um, trying to come up with other ways to um, store. Yeah. So, the, uh, um, well, and I, I see your emoji series through the center there. Yes. With, with the um, so, yeah. And so um, that's actually a pain rating scale. Uh, ah is often used um, in hospitals. And then below it is uh, the DSM diagnostic um, number for bipolar disorder, which is backwards and upside down. I was and gonna say, whenever I've had anyone do that kind of pain rating thing, I never know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> never have the foggiest idea. Yeah, I, mean, I just think it's comical, like, you know, all these sort of rating scales and, you know, 
it, it never really can in, in capture the experience. No, no, not at all. So then there are some words that are enlarged and in bold, like uh, questions, delusions, present. Uh, yeah. Um, and so I was interested in layering patterns and thinking also of like patterns of behavior. Um, and you can go to the next slide. Yeah. Uh, and so I become, I, you, you probably see that the drawings become more graphic in nature. Um, this is 60 inches by 90 inches and it's charcoal and, and pastel with photocopies on the illustration board. Mm -hmm. um, the photocopies are from a 2001 U.S. Surgeon General's report on mental health, culture, okay. race, and ethnicity. Um, and the later graphics are about from comics and also, you know, I'm suggesting actions to, that obscure the text to invite inve more of a um, investigation into the content. So the idea is it sort of lures you with this graphic um, mm. imagery and you don't realize what's underneath. Um, and I wanted to create these sort of conversation bubbles and um, I let the, the Thai floral pattern sort of emerge on top. So it's sort of in and out sort of. Uh, right, yeah. Um, so um, then the next slide, my last slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is how to find yes. you. And um, so at the end what? of this maybe not this week but before long there will be clickable links like this uh, because we uh, we want to follow your work as it progresses and also uh, we want everyone uh, to be able to find you and follow your work the um, no I was going to say that the bi bipolar disorder I have family experience of it um, I have um, I have a relative who is an extremely co competent um, uh, doctor uh, and um, is, but, you know, uh, and she constantly, you know, there's always this tear between the medication, which smooths it all out, but then you lose the most creative, at least that's what she tells me at any rate, but at any rate, it's... Um, so anyway, listen, thank you so much. This is wonderful. And um, so September 20, 2000, you know, next September, a year from now, um, please keep us in the loop. Yes. Because we also, um, I just want to mention one thing um, is that we're still collecting data. So if mm. anyone self-identifies as Asian American and with a mental health di difference or condition, to please go ahead and DM me on Instagram. Um, Hold on, I'm. Can I? I'll yeah. put that back up for a second. Um, or you can email me at um, anonymouswasdata at gmail .com. and you can find out more information about the residency um, as well as my project at the Ida B Wells Just Data Lab um, website. And then I just want to mention, if you're in New Jersey or can travel to Central New Jersey, um, I haven't. I'm having open studio. The art station open studios are Sunday, December 4th, 4th right. 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Heightstown. So, um, and there's the address in the um, website, 148 Monmouth Street, Heightstown. And I uh, hope you And we'll leave it up a few more seconds so people can actually get out their pencils and paper. The um, shot. <laughs> you know, oh, that would be, assuming they... You know, I can do that on my computer. Um, and the other day I was looking in my in my gallery of photos on my phone, there was a screenshot and I went, I didn't do that. <laughs> but so I pushed some button that must have done that. <laughs> anyway, so but this has been really a, a just a very special privilege to share this with you. And thank you very much for coming. And uh, the thing that uh, I will also say is that, again, uh, we will try to have clickable links for several of these things, plus a link to the Masterwork Foundation and its work. And uh, we'll be this will be available on our YouTube channel uh, in perpetuity or, or however long YouTube lasts. Uh, and uh, but thank you so much for sharing. Now I need to now re-promote Todd. Oh. And 
Oh, great. Okay, here I'm going to promote Todd to a panelist, and he's going to come back and give us our lead out. And there he is. Ah, uh, thank you, Joe. And Chanika, wow. I I just really? have to say yeah. your work is so conceptually stunning. And yes. you know, it was I I want to share too that I remember when we were reviewing all of the grants the board was, and it was clear right off just how special that your work is. Um, and so it's really an honor for us to support it in some small way. And it's, you know, just absolutely thrilling that you could share some time with us tonight and explain more about the methodology and, and and all of it and it's um we're we're just you know so humbled by that um we will as joe mentioned be putting this interview up on our youtube channel but we'll also be um, promoting your um exhibit when it or anything else you do <laughs> from facebook and twitter at least at this point in time um as they come available and um uh, folks, you can always um, stay in touch with us on masterworkarts.org. And with that, I'll say thank you. And thank you. good evening.